Yes, I you can see hear you. you. Yes, welcome, Chris. I'm Dane. Great to see you. <laughs> I, I I have a feeling you're going to drop some some of the gems of excellence on us just from just from your surroundings and, and demeanor. You look like you're uh, you're energized up and ready to go. Um, I, and uh, I want to say also thank you for being here. It's a pleasure and an honor. And uh, for uh, for those who don't know, Chris Shelton, he's the founder of the Morning Train Healing Arts Center in San Jose, California. He's an author, um, Qigong for Self Refinement, and a YouTuber. Uh, so he's he's got some really awesome. Uh, information and insights to share with us. So thanks for being here, Chris. I'm really glad we're getting to have this uh, chance to learn from you. Yo, thank you so much for having me. What an honor it is to be here on World Tai Chi and Qigong Day. And uh, Violet Lee, uh, you're a practitioner after my own heart because I've studied and competed with Chen Style Tai Chi for, God, it's been 30 years now. I did my last matches um, at age 40. Yeah, age 40. So nine years ago, we're my last Kung Fu and kickboxing matches. So uh, I hold uh, your training there, your silk really exercises close to my heart. So once again, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be on right now. Uh, 20 minutes, like what Violet says, 20 minutes is not enough time because my wife always says, my man sure likes to talk, and I sure do. Uh, but for myself, I think what we, should, what we should go ahead and start doing is start moving right away. And as, I, and as we do this, then what's going to happen is that I can kind of talk a little bit more about the Qigong that I practice. A little bit about our clinic in San Jose as well as the clinic in Los Angeles. And for me, the big thing about the Qigong is, is that according to Chinese medicine, traditional Chinese medicine, the leading cause of death and disease is actually negative emotions and trauma. And it's really not that the negative emotions are, are bad. It's when they're not processed properly that it shows up as disease inside the body. And so one of the big things right now in Western medicine, the common key word is inflammation. Inflammation, poor. Sure, poor diet, poor lifestyle habits will create inflammation. Being too sedentary will create inflammation. Uh, But what's going on in your mental emotional state is of utmost importance. And the Qigong, at least the Qigong that we teach at Morning Crane with Shelton Qigong, is really harnessing in and focusing on what is referred to as the five elements and the five major organs of the body and how those five organs actually, when they're out of balance, show up as disease. So right now, all I'm doing is I'm shifting my weight, same Tai Chi, same as the Tai Chi principle. I'm shifting my weight back and forth. I'm using my legs as a pump to help to pump the blood up to the chest. The hand in the back is gently tapping the kidneys on the low back opposite the belly button. And now the hand in the front, I can tap my side, I can tap my chest. Here's where my lung acupuncture meridian is, so anybody is looking for immunity right now, and making sure that lung chi is nice and strong is of utmost importance. So it's such a pleasure to be a part of this, and I saw this morning when we were on there, how many people were on, and I'm so excited because, you know, Qigong has been around for thousands and thousands of years, and it's just now, I think, finally starting to get the recognition that it deserves. And, you know, I love physical exercise, I love running, I still train Muay Thai, and I love yoga, you know, but, uh, you know, the Qigong, you have to really pay attention to what's going on on the inside. So three regulations of Qigong. First regulation is physical posture, called the Wuji posture. So the tip of my tongue right now is gently curled to the roof of my mouth, behind the teeth, as if saying the letter N. My sacrum is tucked underneath, pressing back the Ming Men, which is also referred to as the gate of fire, and the gate of fire resides between the left and the right kidneys. So the kidneys relate to the water element, And so it's a proper mixture of fire and water which produces the steam or the chi that circulates around the body. Okay, so my knees are slightly bent, sacrum's tucked underneath, my feet are out about shoulders width apart. 
And what's great is, is that if you're somebody who's stuck in a wheelchair, you can do these Qigong practices from a seated position as well. So we work with the Special Olympics. My wife, Reese and I, who's my business partner, partner in crime, besides running the clinic and teaching classes, we are fortunate enough to be part of the Special Olympics and we're part of a program called Healthy Athletes, Strong Minds, where we give these practices to the athletes, coaches, and their families, not only to deal with the stress of competition, but more importantly, you know, what do you do if you're being bullied? Or right now, like what's going on, being quarantined, not being able to compete, because all the games, all the summer games have been canceled. So it's being able to deal with that stress that shows up as disease inside the body. Okay, and I'm going to slow down here, coming back to the end. I'm going to pull down the heavens three times, inhaling, just connecting to your higher self as you inhale. Then as you exhale, just allow for this white light to flow down through the body, through the tissues, and deep into the ground. Inhaling, feel the white light come in. And as I exhale, just allow for that to gently flow through the tissues, deep into the earth. Notice how I'm still using my legs as this pump. Up the pump the blood up to the chest and exhaling. Okay, so the first movement that we're going to do here is a movement for the liver. Now, our liver is a really big organ and it works with the gallbladder. It's located on the right side of your body. The color green is associated with the liver. And also, the negative emotions of anger, frustration, hatred, old anger, and resentments all affect the liver and the gallbladder. So, from here, I'm just going to press and Gently squeeze forward. So I'm using my legs once again. Breath is still long, steady, even, and deep into the lower dantian. Lower dantian is located one inch below the belly button. So from here, I squeeze to the middle and I press. Now, to make this into a mindfulness practice, I want you to focus on something that creates anger or resentment for you or old anger. It's a little bit different than conventional therapy. Yes, I'm asking you to pick off the scab, but then from there, by doing the practice and focusing the intention onto the liver on the right side of the body, it makes it into more of a mindfulness practice, so it actually helps to fix the wound underneath. So one of the things about anger is that, in all of these emotions, is that they are a barometer of what's going on in our environment. But, if we hold on to it for a long period of time, and just talking about anger and resentment right now, then it turns into diseases like colitis, IBS, eye floaters, TMJ, neurological issues. So that little eye tremor, for example, could be a temporary stress, or it could be a, a forewarning of something bigger. So connecting into the ligaments, into the eyes, I'm squeezing here, elongating along the side, and I'm going to press. Now anger is a good emotion if it causes you to fight for the underdog, to get out of a bad situation, or to create positive change in the world, or to use it as a creative means of expression. Then that anger is being expressed appropriately. But if it's repressed, then we start seeing all those health problems. And actually, di depression is when we have anger that's pushed inward. So I'm gonna squeeze here. Let's do one more of those, I'm gonna press. And then from here, I'm just gonna pull in, pressing down, pulling down the heavens one time, inhaling, and exhale. Just setting your intentions for the rest of this day, this evening. And then from here, going directly into the heart move. Now, there's two ways to do it. You can do it like you're cradling a baby, and then I go to shift. Or you can do it like you're holding a ball. I'm going to do it the easy way first. So I'm going to go over, and I'm going to shift to my left. As I inhale in the middle, I then shift over to my right. So I guess if you're watching this, it would be opposite. So the heart, the color pink or the color red is associated with the heart. And the heart is the emperor or empress of your body. What does that mean? It means that it dictates how much of an emotion will be expressed, suppressed. So it dictates that. And the heart is a 
affected by overexcitation, too much joy, mania, abandonment, loneliness. So to make this into more of a mindfulness practice, as I inhale into the heart center, I'm going to imagine a pink cloud filling up into the heart. As I exhale, I'm going to look at the hands, in particular the pinky, where the heart acupuncture meridian ends, and then it connects to the small intestine meridian. So small intestine and heart work together. So if you have anxiety, or maybe there is anger, because if you think about it, if you get angry, what happens? Your heart races, then it begins your liver. If you become afraid of something, your heart races, then it begins your kidneys. So let's say you're angry because you're at Costco, and somebody just stole or took the last 24 pack of Costco sized toilet paper. Don't let that go like a dark cloud going several feet away from the body and deep into the ground. My dinosaur says it says it exactly how it should be. Life, the struggle is real. When someone takes that last 24 pack of Costco toilet paper, the struggle could really be real. So as I inhale here, the pink cloud fills up into the heart. As I exhale, I'm going to allow for that emotion, whatever comes up for you, mania, overexcitation, to leave like a dark cloud, allowing for the positive virtue of love to come in. And it's not the romantic type of love, it's a universal love that all beings should have innately for one another. And especially right now during this time, we really want to show that love and compassion. So I'm going to press one more, coming back to the middle, I'm going to pull down the heavens one time, inhale, connecting to your higher consciousness, whatever that looks like to you universe, the Tao, God, whatever you want to call it, or just imagine a white light flowing down. And then from here, I'm going to shift over to my left. I'm going to come around, and I'm going to shift my weight back and forth as though I'm holding a beach ball, gazing at the palm of the hand, now working with my spleen and stomach. The color yellow is associated with the spleen and stomach and the pancreas. The negative emotions of worry, pensiveness, overexcitation, Anxiety, thinking too much, all weaken the uh, spleen and the stomach. So the color yellow, so I want to imagine a yellow cloud filling up into the left side of my body. Then as I exhale, I'm going to allow for that worry and that anxiety to leave. So once again, focus, feel a current event or focus on a past event that creates anxiety or worry for you. You know, this organ, this spleen is such a valuable organ. It has so many functions. It's one of the organs responsible for producing blood or making blood. It helps to hold our organs in place, keep the blood in the blood vessels. So, having good earth chi or postnatal chi, they refer to it, is so important because it actually slows down the aging process. So sleep and proper diet according to your constitution, not according to what's the great newest fad, but your constitution is of utmost importance. Because strengthening that post-heaven, that postnatal chi helps to strengthen our prenatal, which lies in our kidneys. So I'm gonna come back to the middle, pulling down the heavens one time, inhale. So let's say you just had some worry or some anxiety. Allow for that to leave like a dark cloud. All the way out deep into the ground. I'm going to bring the hands up, sink into my posture. I'm going to inhale and open. And close. Now working with the lung network. Your lungs connect to your large intestine, colon, and skin. The lungs are harmed by the negative emotions of grief, sadness, sorrow, loss, disappointment, shame, and guilt. So, I want you to focus on something that causes grief or loss for you. What is causing the grief? What is causing the loss? Imagine a white cloud filling up into the chest as I exhale. Imagine that circumstance leaving like a dark cloud going several feet away from the body and deep into the ground. Feel the grief. Allow for it to release. And allow for the positive virtue of courage to come in. So your lo our lungs are responsible for what is known as our Wei Qi, which is our defensive Qi. It 
helps to fight off the intrusions of pathogens, bacteria, and viruses. But did you know once a virus enters into the body, we now look at it. Well, what kind of condition is it? Is it a hot or cold condition? Is it a internal external condition? What organ or organ network is it affecting? So when so many organs get affected when there's just, when there's bac bacteria or viruses that come in. So we want to allow that to leave like a dark cloud, going several feet away from the body and deep into the ground, allowing for the courage to come in, allowing for the grief to leave. And if you or somebody you know, a loved one has lost somebody or a pet is to be put to sleep and all of a sudden you develop an unproductive dry cough that unproductive dry cough is actually the grief stuck in the lungs okay, I'm going to do one more of those so I'm going to inhale open up the chest, exhale Make sure, making sure to relax the shoulder inhale, pull that chi into the chest they also call this the gathering chi of the chest exhale, push it down pulling down the heavens one time, inhale and exhale, just allow for that white light to come in. Okay, coming around here to the kidney network, I'm just going to bend out the waist. Imagine a blue cloud filling up into the kidneys as I inhale on the top. As I exhale, just allow for fear and shock to leave. So what is shock? Shock is surviving some severe type of illness, abuse, neglect, car accident, Something that's very shocking, that shocks the chi of the body. But did you know that also burning the candles at both ends also for the shock system, weakening the kidney network? So sleep, proper diet according to your constitution, so important. And if you're curious as to what your constitutional typology, in the back of my book, Qigong for Self-Refinement, Total Health with the Five Elements, I have a five element questionnaire quiz in there. That's not only going to tell your, you your predominant typology, but also tell you what your weakest element is as well. And the way we utilize that is whatever your predominant typology is, it's the deviation from that typology that starts to indicate disease. And exhale. As I inhale, the willpower comes in. As I exhale, the fear leaves. I'm going to do one more and then I'm going to switch, go the opposite direction. Now you can make this into a stretch if you want, and... Chris, I know time flies when you're having fun, and there's no better example, but we're actually... I actually am. Gotcha. I was doing so good, too. Every time I do my hand movement, I look at my watch very suddenly. <laughs> I, I, I didn't want it to stop. I, this is a, a, a wonderful demonstration. I, I know... Uh, oh, yeah, and I wanted uh, Ahmed uh, just commented that we had 3,700 viewers, so it's it's wow. super inspired to me. Yeah, like that's going out to that's uh, amazing. You know, that many people, and I know this is having such a, a positive effect, just like I was saying to Violet. Uh, it's uh, Qigong and Tai Chi done well are beautiful to watch, and it has an effect just by watching, even if somebody isn't doing it, just it, the effect that it's, it's getting into their brain, through their eyeballs, and it has an effect, so... Increases yeah. the consciousness, right? That vibration, right? That's what it's all about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, can feel, I, I feel that, that uh, and I love that positive and good energy putting out to the world, get into uh, a little bit more of the conceptual discussion behind all this, so awesome. thank you so much, Chris. Yeah, thank, thank you so much. much, thank you, thank you. All right, we'll see you in a little bit. Yeah. I want to I want to start by uh, asking asking you a question, Mike, uh, related to transpersonal psychology, because this is something that really um, stood out to me. Uh, is the link between transpersonal psychology and spirituality, and um, the as <clears throat> The uh, the way I look at it is the three primary branches of qigong being being medical qigong, martial qigong, and spiritual qigong. And medical qigong is about health and wellness, and it's kind of like from getting from sick to well. And 
uh, and uh, Marshall Qigong I think of as like performance enhancement, getting tapping directly into flow states as was one of the themes that, that uh, came up uh, in in uh, in the course of this and. Um, and then spiritual qigong is for exploring uh, higher states of consciousness and other realms, so to speak. And which is what transpers with the overlap with transpersonal psychology, transpersonal being outside the self. So, um, the uh, but it's all the same set of tools. It's all the three regulations: body, breath, and mind. The body, mind practice that are kind of the tools for doing all these things. So, we we try to get people in the door and and. In Tai Chi and Qigong, in uh, internal arts, integrative medicine, generally, we try to get people in the door with with going uh, health and wellness, the medical Qigong aspects, going from uh, sick to well, and then for for people who are already are already well or or, or doing great, and they want to perform even better. They're already high performers, and they want to perform even better. These are the tools for performance enhancement. Um, uh, so I'd like to hear a bit about this. The, the perspective from like spirituality, the, the transpersonal um, uh, crossover with, with Qigong and how all of these same tools for health, wellness, performance enhancement also allow us to explore the transpersonal realm. Thanks for asking the question. I think it's a natural to have transpersonal psychology integrated with Tai Chi and Qigong. And that's been my work for many years and I'm looking forward to more and more people getting involved with that. So the way I look at it is every Tai Chi movement has four dimensions of purpose. Self-healing, spiritual enfoldment, self-defense, and changing your life stance psychologically. So all of those four elements are really there in any movement. And so, for example, if you look at Repulse Monkey, um, what I, I continually learn from my patients, because in the middle of a session, somebody will be trying to speak to their father that they haven't spoken to in many years because he always talks over her. And she says, Dad, I, you need to listen to me. And the person goes and just spontaneously, knowing nothing about Tai Chi and Qigong, going like that in a session because she wants to welcome her father, but at the same time she wants to create boundaries. So the way I look at it is every Tai Chi and Qigong movement is a hidden alphabet that is a tradition of postural initiation that helps us to shape shift into the posture that we need at a given time to heal ourselves, to achieve spiritual states, to defend ourselves, or to change our life stance psychologically. And that I think the transpersonal psychology, and by the way, transpersonal psychology isn't about just about beyond the personal, it's also about through the personal. So basically, there's both elements of it where you're basically using the archetypal energies to be able to embody, to shape shift into different stances like a monkey, a bear, or whatever, and then have that stance in relationship to something that you're dealing with in your life that's difficult and is getting you dysregulated. Right. Yeah, there's the, the everything psychological, everything physical is psychological, and everything psychological is physical. The analogs of this, and this speaks a lot to the the mind body, um, uh, not connection or even uh, duality, but the mind body unity that uh, that, that I know Lama spoke to earlier. So, um, what uh, I I'm, I'm curious to hear some other perspectives on the. How how qigong and and internal practices relate to spiritual exploration and how spiritual exploration relates to the 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 present theme of of boosting resilience through tough times. Who else has has some uh, perspectives on that? So. <clears throat> Yeah, you know, in, in the Yellow Emperor's classic of difficulties, you know, they talk about how um, your heart houses the mind, which is the shen, which is your spirit. And what I tell a lot of my students is, is that, you know, you can tell somebody's spirit, the strength of the spirit by how bright their eyes are and the more sparkly their eyes are. So um, I really appreciate what you're doing, uh, you know, with the uh, 
uh, with, using the psychology uh, with the Qigong and the Tai Chi because you know when we look at mental health this is something that's not really talked about in this country I mean it's been something that's been overlooked for many 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 years it's actually a, it's a tangible tool that people could utilize and when you look at somebody's eyes and if they have that dull lustreless eyes then that means okay well the heart orifices are obstructed so what's going on with the person but talking about spiritual development, as a person continues, and this is what I love about Qigong, is because it does not discriminate against anybody. What I tell my students is that it doesn't matter if you study Catholicism, a Buddhist, a Taoist, it does not matter. Hindu, it just it enhances what it is that you're already doing because what's happening is, is that you're increasing your vibration. And to me, when they say to communicate with God or the Tao, the universe, to me when somebody says that, it's not like, hey Joe, what's going on? It's more of a knowing. Right, it's more of this knowing, and that knowing comes about when the mind is silent. The more that the mind becomes silent, then the more you're able to hear. And so the more that your vibration increases, regardless of what your spiritual practice is, you can't help but to develop. Well, I want to chime in, and uh, I have been teaching Tai Chi for years, and I have taught uh, thousands of people, both in the U.S. and overseas, and my students, and then they uh, have all different uh, beliefs. And interesting is, they all told me, no, well, I, not, I cannot use it, they all, but many of them, they all uh, told me that they felt the spirituality when they were doing Tai Chi. And uh, I have uh, uh, um, someone who, who actually is a professor at a uh, uh, the religious school and uh, teaching uh, uh, Catholicism, and then there are all different, uh, you know, area and a different uh, religious background. But they they all feel like say, the, the spiritual thing. So so it is very interesting, and uh, we all feel that way. Yeah. Okay, that's very interesting because when people come from different religious backgrounds, they also bring along with them different religious baggage. Now, not to be harsh on various religions, and though uh, I'm known for being harsh on religions because I don't consider myself a religious person, I, I'm highly spiritual, but not religious. Uh, there's a, uh, a lot of uh, maybe even misunderstanding when it comes to what a spiritual means. And so essentially, when people put the labels like this is good and this is bad. This often is informed by some kind of indoctrination. But what's good for one person often is not so good for another person. Just like what's bad for one person may not be so bad for another. That's not all. <laughs> when we consider that something is good, that often doesn't have perpetuity of goodness. In other words, things spoil, things change. And similarly, when we deem something bad, it may, not to, may turn out to be not so bad next day or next month or next year. In other words, there is no social agreement about what's good and what's bad. And there is no continuity of, uh, of these labels. Well, it means that they just don't work. If labels don't work because nobody agrees about them, and even if you are the same person who put the label and then it doesn't work next day or next month, that means these labels just don't work at all. Well, basically what we do then is we recognize that labeling the things in the black and white manner, this is good and this is bad, just doesn't work. Well, we have to replace this dualistic way of thinking with something more functional, and luckily enough there is something a lot more functional, and that is the energy awareness based discernment. In other words, a dis discernment based on a sense of energy resonance, which is always authentic. It means that if somebody comes along and says, hey, that thing, for example, whatever this thing is on, the, on your wall, this is not good. This is just really bad. Well, I say, well, if you don't resonate with it, I totally respect that. Now, I resonate with it, therefore, it's hanging on my wall. Now, there is no argument about this is good or this is bad. We are not talking about that anymore. We actually are kind of talking about a completely different subject matter. We're talking about energy resonance. If we use energy resonance, which is exactly the subject matter of our studies <laughs> of Qigong and Tai Chi, 
we can actually transcend most of the spiritual confusion that is associated with thinking in black and white terms. And that it immediately puts it into a completely different level of personal development as far as I'm concerned. We stop operating and making choices and decision-making based on judgment and start making decisions based on discernment. Well, that is like a dream come true for pretty much anyone who pursues personal development, isn't it? This uh, distinction between judgment and discernment is is huge, and um, I, I those those specific terms I think are really important because it, the way I uh, define those things, at least judgment means that you're you're judging something as good or bad, and you have an emotional reaction to it. Um, discernment means that you are aware of what is, and you uh, make decisions appropriately in accordance with your values. And so, um, it's, it, it, uh, can be, uh, a hard idea for people to wrap their ideas or a hard idea for people to wrap their minds around that you can actually live without being in judgment. I, one time in particular, I posted something almost exactly like that, uh, about when being in judgment, you're losing energetic currency. I posted this on social media and. And somebody, one one person that I was connected with, he got so angry at it, he he just blocked me <laughs> because that was so triggering for him. And I I of course uh, uh, I not just mentally wished him well, and <laughs> but um, but it's this idea that you can um, you can respond to things appropriately without uh, experiencing inappropriate emotional. Uh, attachment to them and and without uh, judging them as right or wrong, good or bad, you can discernment and preference are are the the, the two key things. So it's it's completely possible to live without being in judgment. And this goes back to a lot of the fundamental uh, Taoist principles, the fundamental tenets of Taoism, um, how things are just are not good or bad, right or wrong. They just are. Um, I, I think Michael uh, would want to share something about uh, like non dual around non dualism. I really liked what uh, you were saying about non uh, dualism and religion, and I had a case example that I wanted to give from the Integrative Medical Clinic where I worked for ten years doing qigong, and I taught uh, somebody. I, I, I was known for helping people with hypertension and helping to people not to get medications. And this one person came in, and I gave him a method, and uh, he lowered his hypertension. And then I gave him a booklet that basically had a posture in it about the Buddha opens up his hands uh, to the heavens. So he came in in the next session, and he said to me, can you tell me why, you, why you're not the devil? And so I said, what do you mean? He said, well, I believe that Jesus is the only way. And you gave me this Qigong movement that had to do with the Buddha raising his hands to the heavens. And I believe that anything that's other than Jesus is the way of the devil. So I said to him, that's great that you actually came back in to say that. You know, a lot of people wouldn't come back in to the clinic and say something like that. That shows that you're really a true Christian. And so he was a little bit taken back. And I said, I said, you know, the Buddha isn't really like a god or a, a god to be worshipped. You can basically do these qigong exercises and imagine anybody that you want there. For example, you can raise your hands up like that and open your heart to Jesus and then come down and bring Jesus into your own heart and lower like this and bring Jesus all the way down to your feet. And I said, try it. He goes, wow, this is so much better than what you taught me last week. <laughs> it's essentially the same movement that any child performs when it wants to be taken up in a parent's arms. Right. It? But, but exactly the idea of Qigong and Tai Chi is we're getting to an energetic place that's beyond religion and beyond dualism, but we need to be very careful about people's sensibilities and being resilient enough that when we're being criticized or attacked, that you know, even though we're going to feel defensive inside, 
that we can find a place that opens our heart to the person that's criticizing us. That's why we study martial arts. Instead of reacting when the, the strike is coming, we learn how to respond to it. Exactly, respond rather than react. Now, well, one thing is, um, Lama, you had a question. You said, while I was teaching the, the silk grilling, and then you say, how can silk grilling uh, using in the so-called the push hands, right? And the, uh, some of you, pro- uh, the, the audience probably know the push hand is a two-person drill. Uh, in the Tai Chi Chuan, uh, uh, you know. Pretty much everybody here has done a little, a little bit of push hands with me, right? Except for a day. <laughs> okay, good. So it's a two person drill. And uh, uh, the thing is, um, in the philosophy of Tai Chi Chuan is self defense, even though it's a very powerful uh, offensive uh, martial art. But the, the theory is, or the, the principle is uh, self defense. So we, 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 let me just get up and just show a little bit. So uh, for example, you know, I'm talking about the single arm. You know, if somebody throw me a punch, I just grab that person's arm because he's coming to my chest, right? I I turn my body by sitting the the quad this way. I he's coming into this way will not hit me, right? And at the same time, I'm borrowing that person's energy, and then go bye bye. So the person, the I deflect that person's energy, and then go to, go to the emptiness. So um, yeah, and uh, that's how how it is uh, done. Um, so, but it, there are a lot of different maneuvering, and uh, in the Tai Chi Chuan we learn, and that we can all be used in the push hand uh, 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 exercise. Well, actually, my question was not how to use this in the context of push hands. My question was, what are the benefits of these practices when they apply to improving resilience and optimizing our immunity, which is the subject matter of our seminar today? Say that again. My question was not about how to use this in the context of push hands. I see. But rather, how? Uh, what are the benefits of those particular exercises when it comes to improving resilience and optimizing our immunity? Optimize our what? Immunity? Optimize immunity, meaning not too much immunity, not too little immunity, just right. Well, okay, and um, I think uh, um, many of uh, you uh, already mentioned uh, the health benefit of uh, uh, doing Tai Chi and Qigong. And uh, as a matter of fact, I have a couple of books here and to show you. I really recommend that everybody got this one. This is called uh, Chinese Medical uh, Qigong, okay? And this book has been used uh, in the med- medical school in China. It doesn't matter if you study Western medicine or Chinese medicine, you read this book. And this book and, uh, has been translated into English and uh, many of our uh, top uh, medical school uh, in the U.S. and in the, around the world, and uh, they, if they teach alternative medicine, they use this book as well. And uh, in this book, it's talking about uh, the Qigong, and uh, it, it also mentioned, you know, Tai Chi Chuan is a branch of Qigong. And another book I'd like to share with you is the Harvard Medical School Guide of, to Tai Chi. And uh, both work, you know, and they're talking about uh, the health benefit from different angles. And so it is very good. So the silk reeling uh, exercise I was sharing with um, the audience, and uh, it, it is the foundation of Tai Chi Chuan. And uh, so it really helped us to uh, improve our health and then improve our at the same time, improve our uh, uh, Tai Chi Chuan's uh, uh, power. And uh, so your question is, uh, how how does that, um, uh, how should I say, improve our uh, immunity, right? And uh, when our um, health has improved, and they definitely increase the immunity. And then there are different, you know, um, explanations and uh, study show you know, that's 
they will improve our um, immunity. And uh, I hope I answered your question. Well, I didn't answer my question whatsoever, <laughs> but you made references to some information that, that might be able to provide me some answers. So thank you. Yeah, I, I, uh, I know this is this is all good information for for somebody who needs to hear this, and something I'd like to hear. I'm I'm curious to hear your perspectives on this, uh, as as honest and and unfiltered as possible. Do you think the world, on balance overall, if, uh, uh, pandemic and everything, just the big picture, do you think the world is getting better or getting worse deep down? What do you really believe about it? Did, did you not hear anything that we were talking about when it comes to letting go of good and bad uh, and replacing it with energy resonance? Or you, or you think that? But I'm, I'm all different from good and bad. I'm I'm uh, I'm I'm speaking from a perspective of uh, of the limited perspective of language for which there are no better words. So of course the the that can be spoken is not the eternal doubt. But what I'm asking about is your is your fundamental sense um, optimistic or pessimistic or neutral about the uh, about the future of, of humanity in the world? Is the world going to hell in a handbasket, or is it uh, getting better all the time? You're asking all of us this question? <laughs> You're asking a new person? Yeah, and anybody, anybody who has a, a perspective on that. Yeah, I, I, I personally, you know, each week we do uh, we do multiple free Qigong classes in, on Zoom, and, um, and it's touching people around the world, even people that have never have taken Qigong before. And somewhere in our early in our conversation, we we're talking to, oh, we'll talk about religion and knowing your audience, right? And knowing, you know, who you're talking to, being aware of, of what you say because it could be offensive, but being able to have it to where it's approachable. And I think the mere fact that people are isolated and they're looking for things that they have to do because it's not natural for us to be isolated, but they're seeking. The fact that they are seeking shows that the vibration's increasing. And the fact that um, I notice in our neighborhood that animals that normally stay up in the foothills are coming down into the streets now shows that the vibration is changing. And so, and, and what I recommend to the students that take these Qigong classes is that, you know, as you, how do you increase the consciousness of the planet? Well, you start with yourself. It starts with yourself and then it's a ripple effect. And just with that intention of improving yourself and improving your physical, your mental, emotional, and your spiritual uh, well-being and development, just in that alone helps to start to change the, the, the vibration of the planet, and it starts to draw in more of that, you know? It's, it's like, uh, uh, Lama, I think you were talking about at some point uh, uh, about the vibration of people, like if you resonate with a certain painting or music, everything is a vibration, and once you understand that, then you understand like, okay, my thoughts, you know, the, what the Taoists, they have a saying, what is it, uh, your thoughts are louder than thunder in heaven. Yes, and because the, the, that, that wuji, that, that all-knowingness, all-nothingness, is uh, that emanates through all living things, seen and unseen, why or how we think and what we're doing, our actions, then uh, transfers over. So right now with this pandemic thing going on, uh, <clears throat> it's really allowing for us um, true, there are still some people stuck frozen in fear, and that's where I hope that this show, uh, thank you, Lama, for putting this on, um, touches so many lives because to get them, if they are stuck in fear, frozen in fear, saying, hey, you know what, there's something that I could actually do, take control over my own mental, emotional well-being, and, and not be stuck in that place. Well, I'm so glad to know, Sheldon, you are also offering the uh, free Qigong uh classes and I have been doing uh, daily free Tai Chi and Qigong classes for uh, I guess six weeks now mm -hmm. and uh, the, the, how should I say, the participation around the world is just amazing and uh, people really feel they need uh, something and uh, like Lama said, you know, it is a good time we all uh, 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 do something and to improve our health and uh, as far as again you are asking, say, is I uh, will we be better <laughs> or is a good thing or bad thing? Yeah, I, I don't want to get into the, the extreme things, 
But I think with a collective uh, um, wisdom around the world, and uh, we can all help each other out. And uh, I, I believe something good will come out. But that is, I am not exactly sure. But I, I believe something good and nice will, will come out. Of course, uh, this could be a very painful process for a lot of people. And then maybe today we feel, OK, I'm, I'm fine, right? Who, who knows what's going to happen tomorrow? And uh, nobody has a crystal ball. And that's how I see it. However, I feel like you know every day I'm doing something meaningful. And uh, you know, like doing, doing this with free classes. And then I, I share these things with people. And uh, through that process, and I'm better in all, and I think a lot of people also are better off. So um, hopefully, you know, um, as Lama said, and uh, we all learn a new skill, how to uh, defend ourselves and how, right? I think it's the most important part with this war against the coronavirus. It's, it's not as the, the traditional war. It's the war, you know, and uh, actually a lot of uh, us have to deal with ourselves. Yes, uh, many people, like the healthcare uh, professionals, they are at the front line. But uh, the, the last one, okay, it will be ourselves. Are we strong enough mentally? Are we physically strong? We don't want to be defeated just by fear. And we don't want to be defeated just because we are not very healthy to begin with, right? So that's the last line. We have to, to be responsible for ourselves somehow. And uh, I think that, you know, it is great. And the Lama and Dan, you guys spend so much effort and put this together and that we can spread the, the message and then around the world and hopefully more people and then, you know, will join us and to do Tai Chi and Chi Thank you. I like what you've all said about this. And one way to look at it is that we're all going through a planetary initiation. So beyond good and bad, if you look at shamanic journeys, they aren't like a happy, nice thing. If you look at psychedelic research, when people are doing tripping, it's not a really great, nice thing. There is a journey to be gone through in psychedelic research where people touch the worst parts of themselves. They go to hell, like Aldous Huxley said, about heaven and hell. Or a shamanic journey being out in the woods and being afraid of uh, you know, animals eating you apart and being, having dreams of dismemberment. And then out of that, something comes. I think you're all right that we don't really know the timing on this. Because right now, we're going through a transformation that partly we've all wanted in relationship to the earth being healed. And another way, it's something that we don't want because we don't want to be isolated. And so the amount of time that it's going to take to go through this there is a wider perspective. The Taoist shaman in each of us knows that something eventually is going to be coming from the earth, from our own spiritual natures, and each of us are going through our own initiation. All we can say as individuals is called internal versus external locus of control. We can't control the, p the pace of our leaders uh, deciding to turn this into something good. All we can do, like each of you were talking about, is that each of us go through our own transformative journeys, going into our own selves and incubating a new self based on the whatever it is each of us as individuals are going through. And we individuals, and we also interconnected as uh, energy beings. And so we realize that uh, the locus of control is not really outside or inside of ourselves. Again, this is all the illusion of separation. So, in a sense, on one hand, we're learning how to be a little bit more separate and maintain some degree of boundaries now, <laughs> six feet apart. But on the other hand, we learn how much we are actually swimming in this energy soup and how much 
the uh, events somewhere in China, you know, the butterfly flapping its wings, <laughs> causing the storm in the United States. The bat flapping its wings. Uh, yes, another way to look at uh, uh, you know, originally, you know, there's no COVID-19 and uh, we will be out uh, in the community and celebrate World Tai Chi Day, you know, with our community and uh, doing things like that. But uh, with COVID-19, it created another uh, dynamic for us and uh, with uh, uh, Lama, your effort and against your input, and then now we are global. We all connected together, so we are building a much larger community, and then we are all doing this together. Well, you know that's interesting. Um, about fifteen years ago, I moved from the United States to a tiny little tropical island, eight miles wide by twenty-two miles long, of walk, and. Uh, I lived there for a, a few years with all of my students 7,000 miles away. Luckily enough, Skype became available right around that time. And so I started video chatting with my students and also with some of my clients. And so I basically was kind of forced to pioneer this whole profession of Qigong coaching. And I've been doing this for all these years. And now, lo and behold, I don't need to convince people that it's actually possible and doable to work with people long distance like this because, well, we're forced to do it anyway. So now, all of a sudden, the whole profession of Qigong coaching becomes front and center of our activities. It's not maybe called by everyone in the same, by the same name, but we kind of get into the group. Welcome to the 21st century, after all. <laughs> and then what we're doing is also we are transcending our local boundaries of, of uh, state or county or the local market because we can work with people from pretty much any place in the world as long as they have internet connection and speak the same language we can work with them if they're interested in the subject matter so what does it mean it means that now if we were feeling like well there are only so many people in my locale that are interested in qigong or tai chi or similar disciplines all of a sudden we have no uh, uh, complaints about that because the whole world now is available for us to work with as long as we just become available online as practitioners offering these services. So all of a sudden, we have nothing to complain about in terms of limited market. <laughs> <laughs> and also people who uh, are learning how to do this obviously are going through certain stages of, of development and becoming more and more comfortable with it. And I'm actually offering them my services. So in a sense, I kind of positioned myself way ahead of the curve way back then. But then finally, as the, the uh, rest of the industry is catching up with me. You're the visionary, that's great. <laughs> I'm helping, yeah. And so I'm actually literally working with a lot of people who are practitioners and professionals in our community, helping them become more successful as Qigong coaches in life. So for me, I have nothing to complain about. <laughs> I don't think the world is going in the, hell, in the hand basket using the air terminology tonight. Well, but definitely there are some people are in all your suffering there. You know, we talk about the, the healthcare uh, people. And there are a lot of people and uh, the, the blue collar uh, workers, and uh, they they do the delivery, and then uh, you know their restaurants being closed, and the uh, service industry they are suffering really, really bad. And uh, you know, we just need to reach out more to them. And uh, I hope you know, if anyone and uh, they're at home and. Uh, you don't have a computer, you don't have internet access, and uh, maybe you can use your cell phone and uh, to join a single shelter. Uh, your, your class can be seen on cell phone line. I think a Zoom can do that. And then my class definitely, you know, you can do the, uh, use your cell phone. It's a uh, live stream to my Facebook pages and uh, to to YouTube and uh, other platforms as well. So. So yeah, a lot. 
Hello, people are on the air and I'm in the air and um, this is time, you know, we all need to get help out and they also help you each other. Yeah, sending out of, I'm sorry. To, to come full circle, this, this whole eight hours has just flown by and um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's really been uh, an amazing experience and an amazing opportunity. And I, I know that all of these teachers here um, have, have great offerings to share. Um, I, part of, a big part of my mission on this planet and why I wanted to be involved with this sort of thing is, is I want to see more people doing this because I want to live in that world where more people are engaging in their own personal daily mind, body, energetic hygiene practices. I created a group on Facebook, it's called the 7 Day Qigong Non-Challenge because it's designed to be so easy, there can be no excuse not to get started. And, and this event being live stream free, people have uh, access to all these great teachers, there's, there's, there's so no excuse to, to not get started with um, the people who are, uh, who are out there who are shooting on themselves about, oh, they should start exercising, or oh, I should start meditating, uh, and because they, they know about the benefits for health, wellness, longevity, stress reduction, performance enhancement, and they're just not doing it yet. Well, uh, it's very easy because you don't have to kill yourself to exercise. You don't have to break a sweat and, and strain. You can exercise gently, and you don't have to force yourself to sit still to meditate. You can, you can actually get up and move while you're doing it. And, and you can use your time efficiently, just five to 15 minutes a day of something, some kind of practice integrating exercise, breath work, meditation, all at the same time. It's, it's the good kind of multitasking, using your time efficiently. It will change your state, the, the, how you feel in the moment, and consistently over time, it will change your state of being and it's six o'clock. This, this whole, um, my, my conception of it is, uh, it, it comes back to the non-duality. You, we, you are the world you walk through. We are, uh, we are, we are all that is. And the, uh, having a, a picture of perfect health in mind is a, is a picture of perfect health for you. Also the world you live in, you can't see yourself growing in a world that's dying or you can't see yourself fully healthy in the world that's sick. You have to see a healthy self in a healthy external reality and the and that we're all interconnected as a as a species, as a the interconnected web of life. And I uh, am really thrilled and honored to be here kind of in the middle of it in the eye of the hurricane of all these teachings and offerings used to transform themselves and the reality that we all share from the inside out so this is a great way to to wrap up i um really appreciate the opportunity to do this and i'm looking forward to uh, continuing this lifelong mind body mastery journey that we're all on so um with that uh any any final parting words of wisdom before we wrap up well, I am nothing but a big thank you. And uh, thank you for watching also. Blessings to all of you for staying safe and using what's going on to transform your lives. Yeah, and I would say sending out a virtual hug and a virtual and virtual love to everybody out there. Uh, just by sending that out there and always remember, bring it back to yourself, L-O-V-E, and love yourself, love one another. <laughs>